Hello everyone. In week 11, we will talk about two topics. The first one is diffusion of technology. The next is about innovation in the service sector. In this topic, we will cover the basic concepts of the diffusion. We will also talk about the diffusion process and certain models which explain the process itself. We will look into the factors which support the diffusion process, which facilitates the diffusion of the technology and also what kind of barriers could be there which may be hindering the process of the diffusion of the newer technologies via new products and processes. So when we talk about diffusion, if you look at the definition, it is essentially the process through which innovations, inventions or technological advancement, they spread. And in that sense, they are also need to be adopted by individuals, organizations and societies. So there are three major aspect to this diffusion. First, dissemination of the new technology. If we are talking about introduction of desktop, they are now being very widely available in most uh, offices, whether we look at a government or a private uh, institutions, organizations. So, they are available there. They are being used for the different types of work that need to be done. So, the dissemination of the new technology that needs to be done. Then, apart from the dissemination, it also needs to be adopted. Apart from you know doing the work like we used to do with the paper and pen, now we are using these new technologies to do the work. So the technology is available. Moreover, it has also been adopted to do the task which were done earlier using the uh, you know older uh, ways of things. Moreover, there has to be a use of the new technology. So you have to have. Um, a dissemination, the technology is being now disseminated, it is being widely available, it has been adopted in the sense that the different, uh, you know, works that are now being done, people are using this kind of a technology, they are kind of uh, making uh, or taking advantage of the newer technology. So there, you will also see that if many a times there is a confusion with respect to the word diffusion and imitation. Is diffusion very close to imitation? The answer to that would be no. When we talk about diffusion, we are essentially looking at the spread and adoption of an invention, of a technological change. We have already discussed how an invention, innovation can be represented through either new product, process, even organizational innovations, etc. So the spread of such innovations is basically, uh, we are talking when we look at the word like diffusion. On the other hand, the word imitation is, is much more broader, it may or may not entail innovation and it may also be related to the certain practices and or a behavioral imitation as such. When you think about diffusion, there is a very clear intent, a conscious decision. Now that has been made by a potential adopter. The idea is that they will examine the innovation, they will understand it, they will look at the challenges that might be faced in the adoption of it and determine whether to adopt it or not, whether to use it or not for their regular work as such. So diffusion can be seen as an outcome of a very conscious decision by the potential adopters as such. On the other hand, if you look at imitation, sometimes it may not be uh, an outcome of a conscious decision making process. As I said earlier, like it could be the behavioral context. So it may just happen without any specific objective, without any specific idea as to why it is being done. So a conscious decision making may not be an outcome of, may not be a reason for undertaking the imitation. Now, when we look at the different sources, Clearly, innovative behavior is triggered by the introduction of invention in the diffusion. Uh, the behavior that it, in fact, the diffusion in fact starts with the, uh, you know, invention as such. Whereas the behavior being imitated may come from a variety of sources. Like I said, behavior also successful individuals, prominent figures and popular trends. So the source for the diffusion has to come from an, an you know, an invention and innovation. On the other hand, Imitation can be a much more a broader as such. However, imitation of the newer technologies like we have done earlier a case of a Hyundai. So, uh, there it becomes a crucial part of understanding the technology. So, when you are talking about imitation in the context of technological capability building, one, it, it gets limited there itself. Why? Because here when you look at the term, we are saying that it is a very broader term. Right, but we have already studied earlier about you know imitation as a means of a 
technological capability building so if it is a mean then it is already very be, it is already being very specified that what is the context in which this imitation is happening and there you will say that this imitation would be in that case would be a part of the conscious decision making part it would also be you know triggered because of certain invention and as a result you will find that that it could be uh, you know a leading to a specific outcome so in that case when it has been used uh, earlier so sometimes it could be very uh, you know uh, closely linked to the diffusion term as such but here when broadly speaking there are very clear cut differences when it come to uh, use of these two terms so then uh, we have undertaken a lot of uh, you know analysis of how technology innovation technological change are very important and relevant for the policy makers please understand diffusion itself is also very critical when it comes to the decision making by policy maker entrepreneurs researchers as such now why would that be the case because here if we may not be coming up with a newer uh, you know maybe a product or a process which might be already existing maybe in another uh, you know economy or it might be existing in uh, another sector so if that happens and an entrepreneur again uh, envisages or researcher sees that there is a possible uh, you know opportunity there and as a result what they will see they will negotiate they will work out the different challenges and the obstacles or the barriers that will come in terms of using the technology they will also work out the opportunities which is being now presented and then they will deploy the new technology it is very critical and it's a very important part of the innovation process itself so if you remember uh, you know we have discussed about uh, innovation being the creation and also uh, you know production and of the diffusion so it becomes a very important part of the entire process itself and it is very closely related to the economic growth and uh, that comes through the proper chain what is the chain of efficiency enhancement that happen companies may realize the productivity improvements and the gains which will make them competitive at the national and the international uh, level hence leading them to employ more labor or maybe you know uh, expanding their overall work finally contributing to the economic growth as such so in this sense diffusion of technology is also as important as we may understand the creation of the innovation or, or the or the activities which lead to the innovation as such moreover when we look at this diffusion process itself that also contribute to the understanding of the innovation creation aspect also how because once you have let us say an uh, you know when a, so let us take an example of a company which may be now wanting to absorb an existing technology in the market once they want to do that it will bring them an information about they would have to collect the information about the new technology moreover the absorption itself may require some amount of research and development that will bring in an understanding about the need for the investment in the research and development processes the technology transfer process will also imply that they have to now engage with the consultant they have to understand the technology they have to understand the patent how it works and how the launching of the new product happens what was the creation of the new process again the idea of using the technology would lead to a bit of an understanding or a development of that understanding related to these processes and once that happens clearly it is possible that the production uh, you know in that particular uh, firm will also improve so when we are thinking from a firm point of view it contributes now you scale it up to a level of a economy now in an economy which may not have a better technologies maybe for building roads and with the uh, you know ad advent of a better technologies and use of those technologies in a country you may find that now the various roads or which various areas which were earlier unapproachable has now become approachable when we talk about the border aid areas new roads has been built there faster and better over a period of a time clearly as an economy also there is an improvement in the social uh, welfare because the variety of the goods which are available to the people will increase the ease of life may become uh, you know will be facilitated through the use of these uh, modern technologies as a result the diffusion of the technology would be very beneficial in that sense
So if you think from the developing countries point of view, clearly catching up is very important. We have already discussed that. And within an economy, you know, you may have the areas, you know, the developments are much more faster as compared to the others will may not be. So you may have a backward uh, regions or you may have a technological laggard forms. So in those cases, so at an economy level, you may have countries which are technological laggards. At a firm level, you may have a technology laggards. At a region wise, you may have areas which might be relatively backward. So diffusion of technology in this case becomes very important for that. That also fosters this particular process of the innovation and the dissemination and adoption of current technical advances. Is, is addressed by this technology diffusion. Just now I gave you an example of a, a you know, road building. Suppose very fast, better uh, roads could be built. You will be able to reach out to the areas which were earlier unapproachable. That means now the real estate can pick up in that particular place. People may be able to you know, go to work and come back maybe within a day or two. That will again increase their uh, income sources. Maybe people will start visiting those places for tourism or they will be able to, uh, you know, visit some earlier places which were difficult to go that might again enhance the tourism opportunities in that particular place. So clearly uh, that will further facilitate the process as such of the development of those areas. Then this adoption again, uh, when we talk about innovation, it is concerned with innovation, invention and development of the new ideas. But in case of a dissemination, we are not looking for the uh, you know, newer ideas. We are looking for the existing ideas and how they can be spread out to a newer, uh, you know, let us say areas to, uh, to people who have earlier not been able to use it and increase the overall bandwidth with to which the technology reaches out. So that means you are trying to make it much more inclusive. The dissemination process is such that you want to bring in as much uh, you know of the uh, space as much of the individuals concerned. Now technology diffusion it investigates the element that influence uh, technology acceptance implementation whereas clearly innovation will investigate the uh, process for how what would the new process would be. So here we are looking at diffusion of technology vis-a-vis -vis innovation then we know that the motivation for doing innovation is very different. You are looking for maybe a solution to a new prob to a pro existing problem. You are looking for a newer product or maybe a change etc. But in case of a technology diffusion what will happen? You will investigate the element which will influence the technology acceptance and implementation. Whereas in case of innovation, what you will look at, you will look at the new process, new technology, new, you know, how that can be done, what can be done. So there the differences are also there. Why we need to highlight these differences? Because if you think from a point of view of a policy maker, clearly the policy model which they will have either for adoption or a diffusion of the existing technology vis-a-vis -a, -vis a creation, then again they would have to work out those details. So if the focus is on creation, then clearly a certain set uh, of uh, you know activities need to be more uh, advanced or maybe supported, whereas technology diffusion would require another set of activities might be uh, you know supported. But uh, having said that, uh, one has to understand that these two processes are not mutually exclusive. Right? So both are critical for progress and since innovation drives technical improvement and diffusion then will guarantee that they embrace, uh, the uh, inventions are then embraced, extensively used resulting in the social benefit. So these are something where, which are very closely related, feed into each other and support uh, the further development of the innovation as activity as such. So Roger in his book uh, has uh, essentially talked about the four main conditions which will influence the diffusion of the uh, technology. Uh, him being, uh, you know, from the sociology background, the focus has been the overall, uh, you know, in social environment which will facilitate this diffusion of the technology. So the four things are technology innovation, the communication channels, time, social system and individual uh, cost and benefit analysis that, that is a bit separate. So let us look at first of these uh, four, uh, you know, conditions. Here we have uh, different conditions which will influence the diffusion of technology. These conditions include the nature of the technology, communication channels, time, social system and the individual cost and benefit. If you look at technology, clearly one has to understand what is it now getting diffused, whether it's a new concept, product, service or a practice and it includes definitely technology breakthrough or maybe a method of doing things. 
in the process of diffusion the communication channels are also very important because these are the ways through which the knowledge will now spread about the innovation this can be either through a mass media channels like television radios and newspaper or they could be through the interpersonal communication discussions word of mouth nowadays even digital platforms have also become very important including social media website so and moreover the selection of communication channel can also have a considerable impact on the diffusion process so if you think if you uh, uh, you know link the diffusion with an advertising so if you are thinking maybe of a advertisement about a new uh, maybe a gadget or something then you know people might make videos and might upload on a youtube etc whereas on the other hand when it comes to some other type of products you may go for the maybe a big banners etc so again the type of knowledge will also be depending upon will influence the channel which is used to communicate that moreover time will play a very important role because you will find that over a period of a time the acceptance will increase and uh, individuals attribute social norm perceived benefit again are also going to influence the timing of the adoption now when you have the social system here the what are the conventions whether as a society it is something which has more scientific temperament a community with a better scientific temperament may be able to absorb and uh, you know learn the newer techniques much more and the policy environment will also uh, play a very important role in defining the diffusion process within a societal system so if you remember when we looked at uh, bangalore uh, cluster and then the, the silicon valley of india and the role policy played so there you find and realize that that the supportive policies for the software again led to a much more improvements so in the similar way what you will find if there is there is a policy in environment which facilitates the introduction of the new technologies or adoption of the you know foreign technologies in the country so clearly uh, the diffusion will happen much faster lastly Uh, when you look at this four one, they are more uh, you know conditions which are related to either technology or the overall uh, environment in a particular economy. But individual who would be now trying to think of you know adopting a new way of doing thing will definitely conduct his or her own cost benefit analysis. Think from a point of view of a small medium enterprise, maybe something uh, you know in in indoor which are now having uh, maybe a you know in a food processing zone and they are thinking of whether to have their own website or not so in order to do that first of all they will look at the different costs they might be incurred in order to start you know to kind of uh, initiate the uh, website and what are the benefits they are going to accrue if it is possible that they will be able to facilitate you know getting the online deliveries from all over the country etc they may realize that the benefit is going to be higher so at an individual level the use that one may have of a particular technology will have certain cost and apart from that there will be certain benefits so that analysis will be done as well professor rogers in his book on diffusion of uh, innovation has highlighted five attributes of innovation first of all that is related to relative advantage that means if there is an superior invention which is superior to the existing alternatives then clearly the motivation to absorb it would be higher so the degree to which an invention is superior to existing alternatives will determine what is the relative advantage of that particular innovation say for instance you already have a desktop and a new ipad has been introduced and you are now going to compare whether you should go for the uh, you know ipad or whether you want to continue with the laptop as such so a desktop is a via laptop is a via an ipad so what are the advantages that you are going to get from each of those gadgets clearly will determine your need to uh, you know purchase that now you kind of a scale it up to a particular uh, maybe a company which now you are going to use maybe a better techniques and if that happens then what is the relative advantage they are going to use the next very important point is related to compatibility here the idea is that how fast or quickly a ex- new innovation or new product or a process which we are talking about will link to the existing structure and present systems are more likely to be 
accepted. So that means the innovation which is likely to link to the existing structures, which is going to be very easily aligned with the existing system, then they are going to be clearly, uh, you know, more uh, acceptable as such. So if you are now downloading a new app, which is using the current platforms, that will be much more easy for you to do that. On the other hand, if it requires you to, you know, install something, a different platform or maybe a different uh, software, then clearly there would be challenges in terms of accepting it. So again, a similar, you know, way to now extend it to the maybe absorption of a new invention from the company's point of view and also country's point of view. Next, what is the level of the complexity of the innovation? Is it easy to learn? Is it user friendly? And such innovations which are user friendly and easy to learn, it is very uh, obvious that they would be uh, likely to be adopted much more easily as compared to the complex one. Next is about triability. What do we mean here? Here it uh, essentially means that innovation that can be tested on a small scale with little risk can be easily adopted because it would be easy for the individual, uh, maybe the company or for the individuals to uh, use it, see whether it fits in or not. And then if it does, then scale it up or otherwise leave it as such. Think from a point of view of maybe introducing a small uh, gadget into a fan, which will you know, help you in controlling its speed as such without getting up from your seat. So maybe, you know, through the mobile phone, if you can get a trial of it on your own mobile and then again, uh, you know, kind of a test it whether it works or not, the adoption can be much faster, easier. On the other hand, if the gadget has to include some kind of a change in the design of the fan or the way the regulator is being run, then then clearly, you know, the trial and all will become difficult to Apart from that, the observability, that means innovations that give measurable and easy apparent benefit, they are more likely to win the social acceptance and they are likely to spread. Say for instance, when the smartphones were introduced vis-a-vis -vis the earlier phones that we have. So the benefits that you get from it, being able to check your email more comfortably, the messaging and to be able to do lot more through that gadget clearly means that the the gains that are going to come are very obvious they are very uh, you know uh, clear as to what uh, benefit it will bring and that kind of innovation will then will have much faster acceptance and spread based on these absorb uh, attributes again professor roger has given a diffusion of innovation model here it has been highlighted that Here it has been highlighted that there are going to be a different group of adopters. So they are going to be innovators, they are going to be early adopters, they are going to be early majority adopters, late majority and the laggards. So who are the innovators? The one who came up with the invention, right? So they are daring, they are risk taking, they will absorb. Then there are uh, early adopters, you know, could be, you know, uh, somebody who is very savvy with the new technologies, they want to follow the late, uh, latest trends or could have, uh, you know, maybe high social rank which they want to now. Uh, you know, use or maybe want to affirm by using a better technologies. Then they're going going to be a you know an early majority. So a whole a particular after a particular amount of social evidence has been established, then this particular group will embrace the innovation. They will make an informed decision. Will rely on recommendation and experience from the early adopters. Then there is a late majority. Now this one they were earlier unwilling to embrace any change and uh, because of the social uh, pressure or because of the economic necessity, they are being skeptical about the invention but they realize that okay fine now this is what how the things are going to be. So that is how it will be done. So as a result they would be adopting it though maybe a bit uh, reluctantly. Then they are laggards, then the people who are last to adopt an innovation, usually after the majority has, they are usually conservative and they are reluctant to change. So based on that and its analysis of more than 500 technologies that can diffuse, Professor Roger has given us this, uh, you know, diffusion model where they have found out that initially have a situation like that where around 2.5 percent person are a part of your uh, innovators. Then there are earlier adopters around 13.5 percent. Then there are going to be majority, early majority. 
which is rather large around 34 percent then there is a late majority this is also 34 percent and then there are laggards around 16 percent so that means looking at the nature of the adopter that means from early adopter to early majority to late majority and then coming up with the finally and uh, the point where the invention is now being accepted and adopted even by the leggers you will realize that it would have reached a particular level of saturation as such so the, uh, there is a heterogeneity model also which thinks from a point of view of the differences in the customers and it is very closely related to the model which we have done now so here we will think there are different customers they are likely to receive certain benefits from the innovation if the distribution of the benefits over consumer is normal, then the cost of the new product is constant or it will decline uh, over a period of a time. As customer adopt with the benefit they will receive for the product is greater than its cost. So the diffusion product will look like S. So now if you have time here right, and suppose you introduce the sales from the new product or the adoption also as you can see it sales from the new product you will realize that what you will have is a situation where initially as the earlier adopters are assuming it is it will be increasing and then it will increase steeply so early adopters are here then there is a middle range with the early majority and the late majority they are absorbing and suppose we have a hundred percent here so then it will become the saturated one and here why it is getting saturated because now you have the laggards also adopting it and a very typical s shaped cave curve uh, you know or the late adopters that is so this is a range where the maximum diffusion of the technology happens as such so you can uh, you know impose this on this particular curve also where in the sense if you have the sales on this side you can kind of uh, relate it to the uh, way the people are adopting initially when the early adopters are taking there might be a bit of a slow uh, you know pace at which it will pick up once we enter this zone then clearly more people are now absorbing it the uptake will be much faster and then once the laggards are absorbing we are already reaching the saturation level in terms of the diffusion of the technology so these are the two main uh, processes you can say models that explain the diffusion a process as such now thinking from an individual point of view uh, so if you think from a point of view of on the other side right so we have been talking about how we have a technology how it diffuses on the other end you have a decision making individual uh, or it could be done by the central authority uh, again the communication channels are used to, in order to acquire the innovation uh, information about the innovation in this case clearly the social systems will also uh, play a very important role and how much effort is now being made on the advertisement development agencies for the promotion efforts will also play so here we are thinking from a point of view on an individual level so and how whether the adoption will happen or not so first of all if the individual has to make a decision it is going to be very different uh, you know uh, factors which will play out on the other end if it has to be made by the central authority then clearly the changes are going to be different what are the channels what are the mediums which are being used in order to diffuse the information about the knowledge that will also play a role what kind of a social system that is prevalent if you see everyone being absorbing adopting newer trends and clearly that will have an influence and what are the change agents advertiser development agencies that will also influence the adoption at an individual level of the technology